Shalom Uvracha. There's a certain attribute which is associated time and again by the Pasuk with the Mikdash and the Mishkan, with the Tabernacle and with the Beis Mikdash, with the Temple. And that's the attribute of Yira. Yira, or fear. The Pasuk says, Noira Elohim Mimikdashecha. The awe of a Kodesh Baruch Hu is present in the Mikdash. The Pasuk instructs us, Es mitzvosai tishmeru, keep the mitzvos, ves mikdashi tiro'u, and be in awe of the Mikdash. And that's why we have so many halachos that instruct us concerning the distance that we need to keep from the Mikdash. And someone who does approach the Mikdash has to make sure that he's in the right condition of purity that allows him to enter the holy sanctuary of the Mikdash. And this seems to be in tension with the beginning of Parashas Truma that speaks about something else entirely. The expression that repeats itself time and again in the beginning of Truma is the expression of generosity. Kol nediv liboy. Anybody who is generous of heart, he can contribute to the Mikdash. Ish asher yidvenu liboy. Somebody whose heart is generous and he contributes to the Mikdash from that feeling of generosity. And the question is, how do these two very seemingly different internal motions, one of generosity of giving and the other of awe and fear, how do they go together? But the answer to this lies in a distinction between pachad, fear, and yira, which is awe. Fear is something very simple and very everyday. We can be afraid of a shaky wall that might fall on us. We can be afraid of a storm that threatens our well-being. And we can be afraid of the neighborhood bully who threatens us with his actions and with his violence. So all of these are basic elements of fear that we're familiar with. But awe is something else. Awe represents a dual internal motion, which on the one hand is the, a, a very deep desire to come close to something, to be in connection with, in relationship with something or someone. But on the other hand, a counterbalance to that, which is the fear of coming too close out of recognition that we're speaking about something which is very sacred, very holy, very elevated, something which is beyond. And this is what the Ramchal explains on the Pasuk, Reish is Chochmah, Yiras Hashem. The fear of Hashem is Reish is Chochmah. The Ramchal explains that we experience the feeling of Yira, of awe, concerning something or someone that we need. We need, we want to be close. We need something from this very elevated, very exalted person or element, whatever it is, being that we, that we need something from him. And because we need to get close, we need something from there. Therefore, we feel a sense of awe. The sense of awe is a joint sensation. It's a sensation on the one hand that we want to be close. We're needy. We want to receive something from this being or from a, a person or a being. While on the other hand, we're afraid of coming too close because we know that we can get burned. We know that if we come too close, then the result could be disaster. So on the one hand, we want to be close. And on the other hand, we feel a certain sense of fear, a sense of being afraid to come too close for fear of the consequences. And in terms of the Mikdash, this is exactly our sensation. On the one hand, we want to be close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shechina is present in the Mikdash. And we know that everything we have is from Him. And we know that our ultimate destiny is to be close, to come close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But on the other hand, we know that we need to take care. We know that we need to have caution in coming too close to the Mikdash and how we come close to the Mikdash. And that exactly is the feeling of awe, is the feeling of Yira. And that explains why the Nadiva slave is not a contradiction to the idea of Yira, but on the contrary, they go together. Because the Nadiva slave is where it has to begin from. In order for us to feel this closeness, to want to come close, we have to give that an articulation, an expression in our deeds, in what we do. And we can only build a Mishkan, 
we can only construct a place in which we're able to house, as it were, the Shekhinah, to receive HaKadosh Baruch Hu's presence itself by means of coming out from within us and expressing that desire, the desire for coming close, the desire for receiving from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And when we express that desire wholeheartedly out of the generosity of our hearts, that's how we're able to construct the Mikdash. That's how we're able to construct the sanctuary where a Kodesh Baruch Hu is present and where we're able to receive from His goodness, from His presence. And this is true not only for the Mikdash, but like the Nefesh Chaim brings from Chazal, V'asuli Mikdash v'shachanti b'soicham They'll create for me a Mikdash, a sanctuary, a temple, and then I'll dwell among them. And says the Nefesh Chaim, this applies to every one of us. V'shachanti b'soicham, believe kol echod v'echod mehem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu can dwell among each of us, among each of our hearts. But the condition is that we make the first move, that we go towards Him, that we actually give of ourselves. And there's an amazing combination here between giving and receiving, because in order to receive, we need to give, we need to give of ourselves. We have to make room within ourselves to receive from someone. And that making room is an internal motion of giving. It's an internal motion of being able to sacrifice, to give from ourselves our time, our effort, our money, our focus and our concentration, our tefillah, our davening. These are all things that we give like they gave in the time of the Mishkan, from themselves. And in our hearts, this is how we construct the sanctuary within, by giving of ourselves in our Avodah Hashem, whether it's in filah or in mitzvahs or in helping others. This is how we give from ourselves and we make our hearts into a sanctuary. And this is true for Bein Adam Lechaveiroi. If we want to receive from somebody else, to receive his love, to receive his attention, his relationship, we need to give from ourselves to make that space within ourselves for him in order to be able to receive. And it's true, of course, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is what we learn from the Nediva slave of Parashas Truma. We have to give of ourselves, to give, first of all, in a mental sense, that we need to give to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to make space for him in our lives and also in a practical sense, again, whether it's in time or in effort or in the money that we need to spend and so on, we need to give for our Avedas Hashem and then we create a sanctuary within us. We become vestibules, we become receptacles able to receive. And this is really what the Pasuk is telling us when the Pasuk in Tehillim says, Anoichi Hashem Alokecha, Hamalcha Me'eret Mitzrayim. I take you out of Egypt, and then what happens next? Open up your mouth, and I shall fill it. And perhaps this is really what's happening in the construction of the Mishkan. We come out of Mitzrayim. The next stage after coming out of Mitzrayim and receiving the Torah is receiving a Kodesh Baruch Hu's presence receiving Him amid ourselves, in our midst. And we do that by harchev picha, open up your mouth, meaning make space within yourself, give something of yourself, this internal motion of giving, and then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will fill it. Then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give all of His bounty, all of His blessing, all of His goodness that we so need, that we so anticipate, that we so hope for. And that feeling of hope goes together like we explained with a feeling of yira, with a feeling of awe. We want to receive and we know that that receiving means getting close but not too close to a Kodesh Baruch Hu's presence, to a Kodesh Baruch Hu's greatness. We should all have a wonderful Shabbos.